there are many applications where scheduling plays a key role. We will therefore study a simple scheduling problem to demonstrate how temporal relationships can be modeled. As an example, we will use a simple scheduling problem that can be described as follows. Given is a set of n jobs that must be scheduled. We have n equal to 6 jobs in our example, which are represented by different colors. Each job i has a predefined non-negative processing time pi, represented by the width of the colored boxes in this picture. Jobs are non-preemptive, that is, once a job is started, it will be finished without interruption. Furthermore, there are precedence constraints, which are indicated by the arrows in the picture. The yellow job, for example, cannot start before the blue job is finished. Without loss of generality, we assume that we have a first job to be scheduled that is unique, say job 1, the black one in our picture, and we have a unique last job to be scheduled, say job n, the white one in our picture. Our objective is to complete all jobs as soon as possible. Let's use Legos to illustrate the situation. Scheduling means to position the jobs along a timeline. A feasible schedule, that is a schedule that takes into account the precedence constraints, could look like this. How can we model this? As always, I recommend that you give yourself a try and pause the video now. One way to model this problem is to define a real value decision variable, say ci, that represents the completion time of a job i. Minimizing the completion time of the final job can then easily be written like so. Let's assume that the first job cannot start before time t equal to zero. As a consequence, the completion time of the first job cannot be smaller than its processing time. All other jobs cannot start before its predecessors are completed. With respect to the completion times, this means that the distance of the completion time of a job and the completion time of a predecessor must be at least as large as the processing time of the job. The precedence constraints are parameters. We know them in advance. Let's assume that they are given by a set named E that contains pairs of job numbers i and j. If a pair ij is an element of E, we know that job i must be completed before job j starts. Formally, this can be written as follows. The variables c are non-negative. This simple model is a linear program that represents our simple scheduling problem. Let's assume that the processing times are integers, which is not a strict assumption because we could always scale up all processing times by the same factor. If processing times are integer valued, it is clear that an optimum schedule can be found by considering integer valued completion times only. Furthermore, let capital T be the length of the planning horizon, that is, an estimate of the maximum time needed to complete all jobs. An alternative model can then be formulated by introducing binary decision variables xit, which take the value 1 if time t is job i's completion time, or 0 if not. The completion time of a job i 
can then be expressed as follows. As shown in a previous video on eliminating variables, we can now eliminate the C variables from the model to get an alternative model formulation that is still linear. When comparing the two modeling approaches, that is the approach using continuous C variables and the approach using binary X variables, the first approach seems to be the better one. The first model is a linear program, which is good when it comes to solution procedures. The benefit of the second approach becomes obvious when further aspects are to be added to the model. Suppose, for instance, that each job requires a constant amount of resources when it's processed and these resource units must be made available throughout the entire time of processing. When a job is completed, the resource units become available again. Let's consider our example to make things clear. Suppose that three resource units are available. This could be workers that are needed to fulfill the jobs, for instance. Assume now that the red, the yellow and the orange job require two workers each. All other jobs need just one worker. Let the height of the legos represent the resource requirements. As you can see in the illustration, the former schedule is not feasible anymore because there are points in time where more than three workers are needed. Obviously, we must look for other schedules. But finding schedules is not our problem. Our focus lies on modeling the situation. What we need is a capacity constraint. How can we check how many capacity units are needed in a time period from time t minus 1 to time t, let's say? A job that is completed at time t requires capacity in that time interval. But jobs that are completed later than t also require resource units in the time interval t minus 1 to t depending on their processing time. Let Ri be the capacity units that are required for processing job I and capital R be the resource units being available. Capacity constraints can then be formulated like this. Note that this formulation is still linear. If you try to add capacity constraints to our linear program using the C variables, you'll notice that this won't work 
unless you give up the property of being a linear program.